Every year, Lawrence Livermore releases energy flowcharts that illustrate how much energy the US used that year, where it came from, and where it went. These charts, which are technically called Sankey diagrams, give us so much valuable information in just one seemingly simple, streamlined visual. I wanted to know more about how we put these together, so I actually called up two of our energy experts behind the Sankey diagrams while they're at home and I'm at home during this whole lockdown thing, and asked them some of the most common questions we get from you guys about what these charts are telling us. The flowcharts show us where our energy comes from, how we use it, and where it ends up, and kind of roughly how efficient we are at putting that energy to use. We've been making the Sankey diagrams since the mid-1970s. The first ones were actually hand-drawn, if you can believe it, and in the years since, they've become a valuable resource to help scientists, analysts, and other decision-makers visualize the complex relationships that affect how we manage and track our nation's most important resources. On the left-hand side are the resources, renewable, nuclear, and fossil. Energy flows from left to right as we track it from resource to disposition. The lines on the diagram show um, how much of each energy resource or carrier goes between different parts of the energy system. So, for example, almost 12 quads of natural gas are used to make electricity, while, you know, just over 10 quads of coal are used to make electricity. Um, hold up. What's a quad? So the United States uses about 100 quadrillion BTUs of energy in a year. A quadrillion is a big number. So think about it this way, maybe a gallon of gasoline has about 120,000 BTUs. Alternatively, your toaster uses about 100 BTUs in the two minutes it takes to cook your bagel. Okay, back to the flowcharts. Electricity generation, which is in the middle of the chart, um, is a really important piece of the energy system where many different resources are transformed into a totally different type of energy carrier. Outside of electricity generation, you can also see that there's a bunch of areas where we use energy resources that have undergone minimal processing between you know, how they were extracted and how they were used. The right-hand side of the diagram breaks down our energy use into residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation sectors. So houses and apartment buildings use energy differently from office buildings and restaurants. You know, manufacturing, agriculture, and construction are all part of that industry box. And transportation covers our cars, trucks, planes, and ships. And then way over on the right-hand side, we break down energy use into services. Um, those are the parts of the economy where you know energy use makes our lives better and rejected energy. Okay, so energy services refer to the commodity that's actually used or demanded. So it refers to the service that requires energy use. And they're different based on the different sectors. So like, for example, for the residential sector, an energy service would be like when you turn on your lights in your home. And when we see that, rejected energy category, what does that mean and where does that come from? So the rejected energy is uh, energy that is returned back to the environment and it's lost due to its low temperature. It's unavailable for any use or economic, has no economic value at all. And it's just released back into the environment. Whenever we transform energy from one form to another, we lose some energy to the environment. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And the second law of thermodynamics says that whenever we play around with energy, some of its quality gets degraded. Got it. So like when my car engine gets hot, that's like some of my oil's energy being wasted back into the environment as rejected yes. energy. Exactly. That's pretty much one of the biggest questions that we get about the flowcharts is like people really focus in on that rejected energy and people always wonder if there are ways that we can reduce that rejected energy, you know, on, on an individual level or on a larger level. What do you say to that? So if you make like a lighter, more aerodynamic car, you need less energy to give you the service, so you reject less energy in providing it. So another example might be doing a better job of insulating your house, you need less energy to heat or cool it. Better energy technology can make transformations of energy more efficient. 
So today's cars, even the ones that are bigger and heavier than the cars from the 1970s, get much better mileage because of better engine technology, things like fuel injection and turbocharging and low friction materials. Or another example would be LED lights that provide us with better, more controllable illumination than incandescent bulbs, and they create a lot less heat in the process. And there are changes and trends that we can track thanks to the record of these flowcharts through the years. Like in 2018, for instance, the flowcharts helped us see that Americans used more energy that year than in any other year. And the prior record had been set in 2007, so this was a new peak. So we're seeing an increase in that energy being sourced from renewable sources like solar and wind. And we're seeing a decrease in that energy being sourced from fossil fuels like coal. But we're also seeing petroleum increase, but that could change due to the increase in biomass also being uh, used for uh, like ethanol. So we're kind of seeing a trade-off between you know an increase in the renewable sources and fossil fuel sources going down. That's something that I love about these Sankey diagrams. They show us where we are and then inspire us to ask questions about how we can get to where we want to be. Awesome people like Hannah and AJ take all of the data gathered by the U.S. Energy Information Administration to put these flowcharts together. But the lab is actually looking to take this even further. We are currently working on international energy flowcharts in order to be able to compare and contrast with the United States and other countries to see where they get the majority of their energy sourced, what sectors it goes into, um, where, what happens with their energy, do they have a higher projected energy, and hopefully those will will be released by the end of the year. We are currently working on um, releasing flow charts similar to these for the carbon dioxide flow that will show the source and also the sector and the end use of where it ends up. Those are on the Lawrence Livermore uh, website now, but they're backlogged to the year 2014. We're working on uh, filling in that gap and producing out the newer ones for both the United States and at the state level. So if you're curious about your own state's particular usage, you can check out our webpage with each state's flowchart here, and the link is also in the description for this video. And the most updated versions of the state-by-state -state flowcharts are coming soon. What's your favorite thing about the Sankey diagrams? Let us know in the comments, and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this about field-defining research coming out of the lab. Follow us on all of our social media accounts for daily updates on our work, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.